Car wash number one. Car wash number two. And car wash number three. Generating this guy a combined sum of $6 million a year. Car washes need two things more than anything else per location. Early on, we were hemorrhaging money. On a daily basis, I wanted to quit. I think most businesses fail not because they're bad, but because they're average. And today, average isn't good enough. 100% of the entry-level employees are on the autism spectrum. We didn't know anything about car washing, and we didn't know anything about employing people with autism. We had a wait list of over 600 people that wanted to work no here. No way. That's where I would start if you wanted to get into the car wash business and didn't have a lot of capital. His secret? Well, stay with us to the end, because it's an up and coming style of entrepreneurship that you don't want to miss. Six million dollars a year? You sure that isn't Walter White's car wash? <laughs> we get the Walter White uh, questions a lot, yes. <laughs> so well, what's the answer? <laughs> All right, Tom, it is good to meet you, my so friend. Good to meet you, Paul. Likewise, let's start with your childhood. What was it like growing up? Brother, father, mom, just give us an understanding of where you came from and how you ended up being here. Yeah, you know, the inspiration for the whole business and big part of my life is, is my brother Andrew, who, who has autism. So I'm his older brother by about 20 months. But you know, it was different growing up with a brother with autism than a, a typical brother so close in age, mm -hmm. right? It was a different type of relationship. Mm -hmm. But one that really helped me develop into the person I am today. It taught me, I think, to be more caring and empathetic at a young age. So it sounds like he had a huge part about in developing who you are today. That's absolutely. what it sounds like to me. Is that the case? Yeah, absolutely. You Just know, one brother, no sisters? Just the two of us, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Just the two of us. <laughs> we can make it if we like. All right, Rising Tide Car Wash has three locations across the Fort Lauderdale area. So give us your opinion on which location you think washes the most amount of cars. A, Coral Springs, B, Margate, or C, Parkland. Comment below to see if you guessed right. So you say that your brother Andrew is probably the primary purpose behind this business, right? But I have a question, like why car wash? Why not any other type of business? Yeah. So, you know, we looked at a lot of different businesses and what we were looking for, there were some like fundamental assumptions that we were making. Mm -hmm. And one was based on the limited body of research at that time was that a lot of people with autism, including what we saw with Andrew, were you know, really good detail orientation, strong affinity for routine and structure and process. And then we wanted something that was in the community because we are our central thesis of what's wrong, why there's such little employment for people with autism, is that society looks at it as a disability that requires sympathy mm. instead of a really valuable right. diversity. Yep. So we wanted something that was really out in the community that could change that perception. And then, and this one's really important, we wanted a service that was undifferentiated. So meaning that there wasn't a lot of brand value in the market, and we felt that with our story, we'd be able to really differentiate ourselves beyond our competition because there's another reason to come to us besides right. just regular price, quality, speed, the regular you know, attributes of a service. And that is the story that And that's sharing. the story and the mission of the business. Yeah. So where are we, Tom? We're at our Margate location. This is the second store that we opened and it's our largest location. And what's the difference between here and where we started? This store offers both interior and exterior services, where the other one offers just the outside car washes. Gotcha. So we do the outside car washes through the conveyorized system, and then we also offer interior cleaning services right here. So you, dad, mom, your brother, Andrew, are running these car washes. But when you got your first one, wasn't there a lot of fear of getting into something you don't know, you don't have no experience about? Yeah. How did you walk that path, yeah. that journey? What does that look like for you? Well, so, I mean, we didn't know anything about car washing and we didn't know anything about employing people with autism. So we knew very little about what we were doing. What we knew was that we needed partners that could fill our knowledge gaps. So we needed mentors and advisors that did understand those things. So we went out and we tried to find those people early on. We found a, a really wonderful car washing partner in Sunny's Enterprises. Mm -hmm. They're the group that actually provides our equipment for us uh, and our chemistry for us the, that washes the car. So they're a really important partner in the operations of our business, but they also have a whole training platform called Car Wash College. So that was very helpful in teaching us kind of the fundamentals the basic, of the business. Yeah. We also found some disability employment consultants that had worked see, on yeah. other employment um, initiatives, namely like Walgreens and TIA Craft at that time. And we ran a test, right? Before we bought a car wash, we actually worked at an existing car wash for a summer. You did? The when you say we, the... Yeah, my dad, your dad, okay, me, all the... Andrew. We recruited a, a group of 17 other 
uh, people with autism to train them the industry standards. Gotcha. And Very smart. It, we needed it. I mean, we weren't ready to make that type of you know financial commitment before we had some idea of this, if it was going to work. And luckily, the owner of Sunny's, Paul Fazio, he owned one car wash at the time that they tested equipment at, and he let us use it for the summer. Wow. So that was really critical in our success. That won't happen for everyone. I mean, I can't necessarily go out and say, hey, can I use your car wash? So that's unique, right, yeah. in a sense. I think the, the broader thing, right, is yeah. that we're going to find people who know what we don't know. We're going to try to find, go Got out it. and find mentors early. And then you don't know what will happen, right? And you they're know? out there, right? Exactly. Like, Especially if you have a social mission, right? Because people are mm. really willing to help. Paul probably wouldn't have done that for any car wash operator. But he did it for us because we had a mission and he gotcha. cared about that. Yep. Alternatively, right, if you didn't have a social mission and you were just trying to learn the business, mm -hmm. you can go work at one, right? You can say, hey, what's the best car wash in the country? Let me just go work there for a little while. Start yeah. on the line, you know, take an entry level job. Yeah, it doesn't have to be long too. I mean, exactly. A few months and you'll learn a lot. Yep. So Parkland, that was existing, failing, you bought that, but we're at Margate and then we were at... Uh, Coral Springs. Coral Springs, yes, thank you. Can you break down the numbers on the cost to develop this one and that one as well, real estate as opposed to tech, building and so on? Just interesting to find out. Yeah. Because it's heavy on capital, so yeah. how yeah. heavy? So the real estate for this Margate location was 1.5 million. The one for Coral Springs was just under 1.3 million. You have then the site development costs, uh, which are essentially like getting the property to where it's ready to be built on. Mm -hmm. Just a pad. Yeah, so we're talking a few hundred thousand dollars uh, for each one there. The equipment for each one's around a million dollars. And then the building you know, is a couple million dollars. Our all in costs for both this one and our Coral Springs one were just under $5 million a piece. Each, okay. Yeah. Man, that is, yeah, so if you're thinking of getting in and doing exactly this, yeah. Unless it, you have five mil. Well, so you don't need five mil. I mean, you can, so what yeah, most nice. car wash operators, especially when you're we're starting up, you use a SBA financing. Yeah. At least in this market, if you're in a market where the real estate is cheaper mm -hmm. uh, and there's not the same building codes because South Florida, everything has to be concrete and steel because mm -hmm. of the hurricanes. Okay. You could probably do it for maybe maybe half a million dollars um, yeah. in, in uh, liquid capital. For in, a, in a different market. Did you finance all that yourself with SBA for both locations at we used 20%? S yes, we used SBA, and then after a couple of years, we refinanced that into uh, regular commercial debt. We're at the entrance of our Margate location. Nice, this is where the dirty cars come in. That's right. You've had access to, I think, a luxury a lot of us don't, and that is capital, yeah. which is a good thing. Uh, for someone who doesn't have that, can you elaborate a little bit about on the process of the SBA loans? I know people can detail or Google the rest of the details, but what's it like been for you? Yeah, so uh, you're right. We were very blessed to have access to capital that allowed these businesses to form, and that's the way that we approached it. The SBA financing is a really important um, funding vehicle for a lot of car watches, and, and including us. You can essentially, as a new business owner, write purely on projection you're able to access about 80% of the total project costs. Gotcha. Uh, that can vary a little bit. It could go up a little bit. It could go down a little bit, depending on how comfortable they are with you as an operator. Uh, for us, we got 80%, and that allowed us to really be able to, to do these locations with the amount of money that we had to do them. Yeah. What's one key thing they look for in order to give you that loan successfully, would you say? Is it a business plan? Is it an opera a yeah. business in operation that's proven itself? What is it? I, I think it's really important to find a bank that's comfortable with car washes. So there's um, the bank that we work with, Paradise Bank in uh, Boca. They they do car wash deals all the time. So they know, they understand the location. Yeah, it's their... Yeah, they understand. They look at the demographics of the location and say, okay, this is a viable site. They look at you, they get to know you. You have to write a business plan. And, you know, my dad had, had business experience at that point. I had a business degree. So they were comfortable with our business, yeah. um, you know, acumen in order to, to execute it. Yeah, guys, if you want to know, if you want to know how much out of the six million dollars a year across three locations that he gets to keep, we'll elaborate on those numbers a little bit later. So keep on watching. Tom, what are the advantages and I would say disadvantages of potentially hiring a team and staff with autism? Yeah, I think the single largest advantage, especially for uh, a retail type business like this that has a lot of entry level employees is that there's a lot, a large pool of people who really want to work. When we, when we opened hey. this location, it was 2017, the regional unemployment was like 3.4%. So it was really difficult to find anyone to, to hold down jobs, let alone the staff, 45 new jobs, 
at a new, new car wash. We had a wait list of over 600 people that wanted to work no here. No way. It was, we, we staffed this store in a matter of two weeks. So many people with autism that want to work, that are capable of working, what people don't understand is that people with autism, there's only 16% uh, of that population have significant intellectual disability. 84% of the autism community are totally capable of holding most jobs. Man, that's really cool. And yet you're seeing somewhere around 80% unemployment among that group. And that's just because we don't do the work or we don't really think about, hey, let's try to bring this group of people in, right? You're not gonna find this group of people the same way that you're gonna find a typical group of, of employees. A huge thank you to our sponsor, HP. Running a business is no small feat, but it's easier with the right tools. A reliable business notebook like the HP Dragonfly G4 powered by 13th gen Intel Core V Pro processors can be a game changer for busy business owners. The Dragonfly G4 gives you seamless Wi-Fi connectivity and a sleek, foldable, go anywhere design with hours of battery life and an OLED power saving mode, which means no more hunting for an outlet. Its SmartSense technology automatically optimizes performance so it runs quiet and stays cool. Best of all, it weighs less than three pounds. Just take a look at how slim it is and you still get the 13 and a half inch display. For content creators, the HP Dragonfly G4 is the first business laptop with two simultaneous cameras and AI driven auto camera select, which recognizes which camera you're facing and maintains eye contact. The sound is just as incredible. With AI noise cancellation and dynamic voice leveling, your audience will not miss a word, even if you're in a noisy space. No other laptop this portable offers such incredible performance. If you want the best business computer, check out the HP Dragonfly G4 using the link in the description below. Sweet, let's do Blitz. Thanks to our fans for submitting your questions. The first one is BabyZoo9147. How did you bring the car wash from the bottom up when it was failing? Did you take out a loan? Yes, so initially because it was failing, we weren't able to get a bank loan, so we got a loan from the seller. So they mm -hmm. financed it for the first year until we were able to then get by bank, bank financing. Smart seller financing. Uh, next one, Fazlira Man 6122 How can I start this type of business with low capital? What type of challenges would one face when starting it? I know it could be a long answer. Give it to us in 10. This model of car washes cannot be done with little capital. It's a real estate capital intensive business by its nature. Mm -hmm. I would say I've seen on your, on your, your page there's lots of mobile detailing type uh, videos that that's where I would start if you wanted to get into the car wash business and didn't have a lot of capital. Cool, yeah, that is low cost entry. Uh, with your success today, if you could go back to you as a fresh graduate, what is one piece of advice you'd give yourself? Work in the car wash first before doing it. Okay. I would have gone to work in another car wash for a little while. If you could wash any celebrity's car, whose would it be? Elon. <laughs> All right, Elon, come on, we're waiting for you. Rising tide here in Fort Lauderdale. What's one piece of tech you wish existed for car washes? The ability for us to uh, talk to all of our retail customers, like Toast, a, a better POS system. Okay. What's the most cars you've ever washed in a single day? A little over 1,200. Wow. All across three? No, one. So wow. total across Here three. at Margate? Yeah. Wow, I think that's pretty cool. If you weren't in the car wash business, what would you be doing? I'd probably be in management consulting. Last one from PWJV. Six million dollars a year, he asked. You sure that isn't Walter White's car wash? <laughs> We get the Walter White uh, questions a lot, yes. <laughs> so well, what's the answer? I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thanks for your questions. Tom, what can you tell our audience when it comes to competition? Some people fear competition, some people embrace it. What's been your experience? What's your uh, thought process on that? So our first location, we have a really good competitor about a mile away from us, which is quite close. Mm -hmm. So they're you know, a national operation, the owner of the company actually lives in that community, so he's, he's at that store a lot, and he is really an elite level operator. So for me, that was very helpful, because I got to watch and say like, this is what it's supposed to look like. So let me go there, I, I stole a lot of things that I saw them do. Well, I rip off and duplicate. Exactly, I mean, I see, I see what they're doing, I wanna kinda emulate those things, and it pushed me to be better. I think most importantly though, and this is something that my dad tells me all the time, is that 
regardless of the competition, you cannot control them, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot control this. That's a good point. All you can do is focus on what you're doing, right? So it can provide you more motivation to do better, but at the end of the day, focus on your business, making your business better, doing as good as you can do, and let the things that you can't control, let them out of your mind. So you've got one location that you bought existing, you've got other two ground up. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages uh, for buying existing as opposed yeah. to building. Buying existing versus buying a, uh, a ground up, it really depends on what the market is for the multiples of, of each car wash, right? So if the multiples are high for an existing business, it's better to build one because mm -hmm. that way you're able to um, essentially immediately appreciate the asset once it's operating. But it takes a ton more capital. It takes a bit more capital. I wouldn't say it's a ton more capital. When the multiples are low and you can buy a existing car wash for uh, a reasonable amount of money, then you can benefit from essentially appreciation in that asset once it's uh, operating for a while and you're able to turn it around. Typically, mm -hmm. typically you're gonna buy a, a car wash that's struggling and have to turn it around. Buying existing business, any in, just like in any business, if it's a good, really profitable business, it's going to be really expensive. But for someone who doesn't have a lot of capital, the the avenue would be probably an existing business, right? Yeah, you can work up a seller financing deal, things like that. Yeah, I would say I would agree with that for sure. So the other totally downside to doing a ground up is that it takes a lot longer to get into business, yeah. right? It takes two years plus to from the time that you execute the purchase agreement to the time that you're actually operating. Right. Where when you buy an existing one, I mean, you'd be in business Day tomorrow. One. Yeah. yeah. What's your advice on having the, the best pricing structure for the market, demographics, and so on? What's, what's the yeah. process? So for us, we're looking at uh, competition-based pricing. We've got other car watches in the market. We're trying to be as price competitive with our competition. Mainly driven by that. So somewhere within 10% of the market, we offer a, a, a basic car wash that's you know, between eight and $9, depending on the location. So then an easy way to get in to try us. Mm -hmm. And then we go all the way up to you know, 25 on the outside and 37 on the inside. What about like the Walmart way? You know, Sam Walton, like yeah. went to all the stores, saw what their price was, and then went and totally underpriced everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think, do that? I think you definitely Wouldn't you can. Wouldn't you be flocked with the business? I think some car washes have done that. I think for us, we want the mission to be associated with a premium service. So because of that, we want to be you know, generally like right around, if not maybe 10% higher than our competition. Competition, makes sense, yeah. good model. Can you break down the numbers for us for the first location? Revenue, yeah. margins, how things look, maybe in the first 12 months as you acquired it. So that original location, right, it was struggling when we bought it. It was washing about 35,000 cars a year. So you're talking about somewhere around $600,000 a year in revenue. Like I said, we have a fairly high fixed cost. It's really not making any money at that yeah. point. It's in, in our first few months, in fact, as we tried to build the business, we were losing money at a pretty good clip. Up to, mm -hmm. up to I think, our biggest loss was at like $30,000 in a while. Oh, wow. um, Ouch. So it was, it was tough at the beginning. And then, you know, as uh, our quality um, improved and our reputation grew in the, in the community, and people kind of started to learn about what we were doing, the business started to take off. Uh, I, we had our first break-even month in October that, that year. So that was about um, four months after. Acquisition? Yeah, four okay. months after, after we actually opened it. We grew steadily at that point for a few months and then we had a big moment where uh, we were featured on the, night, on the nightly news. Mm -hmm. So we had our story Saw told that. to a big audience and that really the business started to take off from there. That month we washed 8,000 cars and then we, we grew all the way up to, we washed uh, like 15,000 cars uh, six months from then. So we continue to, wow. to, to really grow. And, and you know, at that point when we're washing, you know, like 15,000 cars a month, our margins are about 50%. So 50. Yeah. Okay. That, once you're, once, when you're on those months where you're really, right. you're washing a lot of cars, you've got, you, you've hit the wheel is spinning, the you've got the process in place. Yeah. That's awesome. That's that, when you're really doing well. Is that about the uh, average industry standard you say to shoot for 50 plus percent? Um, so is as far possible? as gross operating income, yeah, I yeah. think so. As far as our nets, what we're looking for is somewhere in the 20s. So with no experience, absolutely no experience in running a car wash, right? What were yeah. the first couple months like for you? Like, what did you learn, right? That's what we wanna hear from you. Yeah, I think the way I got through it and what really helped me was being solely focused on it. This was the only thing in my life that mattered at that moment. And you know, I was younger, I didn't have a family, I didn't, I didn't have a wife at home or anything like that. So it allowed me to really just 
give 150%, all of my waking hours were dedicated to this. So I had some flexibility in my ability to just keep learning, keep working, keep improving the business, keep improving myself. I realized that on a daily basis, I wanted to quit. There was always this right. flashpoint in a day where like maybe it was a, a customer that was really stressful or something broke and I had to try to fix it and I had no idea what I was doing or I had an employee issue. And I was just like, you know, in my head, like it just became like, okay, here I am in this part of my day again. I'm gonna make get through it just like I did every other day. In the quitting part of the day, yeah. Exactly. Then I'd go out onto the floor and I'd talk to our employees with autism and a lot of them are just a joy to be around no matter what. And it was like, okay, this is why I'm here. I'm here for my brother, I'm here for my family, I'm here for these guys. And that got me through those things. Let's talk about the money mat, right? Yeah. You developed that with your team. How do you think other entrepreneurs can implement that in their business? Not necessarily a car wash business. Yeah, so I mean, the, the general concept, right, is that we're trying to make things structured, visual, and clear, and as simple as they possibly can be, right? So we were struggling with uh, essentially being able to keep our, our cash out organized, the money would get all jumbled up when they were doing their nightly closing. And then if there was a mistake, it'd be really hard to find where it was. So we needed a solution to make that more clear. And that's what the money mat does. It essentially organizes the cash so that we know where, you know, each machine has its own little spot. The formulas are written all, all out. So it's, it's easy to track the whole process visually through the system. So really what, what I think the takeaway is for other entrepreneurs is if you have a system that a lot of different people are, are using on a daily basis, it's really important to make that system as clear as possible, to make it as visual as possible, and to work with your team members who you feel like they, they struggle the most with these things, right? So whoever's struggling the most, that's the person who you design it that's with. That's the opportunity, yeah. Because if it works for them, then it likely works for the rest of the team. All right. On a lighter note, Tom, what's one of the surprising, funkiest, weirdest things you've ah. found at one of your car washes? We found a, a pink uh, foam sword in the middle of the car wash once. It must have been in somebody's like pickup <laughs> bed and it flew out. That's team, it? Team had a lot of fun with that one. That's cool. What about like jewelry and coins oh, and yeah, all that? Had, you, uh, is that common? Yeah, especially in like the self-service vacuum. The vacuums? At least once a year we have a lady like suck up her like engagement ring and you and know, ho hopefully the filter catches it. But we have had times where it just like can't we can't find it. And so they do come back and they're like, I oh, lost yeah. my ring. In like oh. a big panic, like, oh, oh no. my god, I lost my ring. Like, you got to think of some technology to prevent that. Yeah, well, the the filter usually does, but you you know, usually, usually does. But then it's a wedding ring. Yeah, you know that usually. Yeah, it's usually a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> usually a big deal. <laughs> Honey, where's your wedding ring? Yeah. Uh, I went to Rising Tide Car Wash. And it's gone. And it's gone. <laughs> Other than team members with autism, why do customers choose you over their competitors? What else can you highlight on that? Yeah, we're really focused on consistency of quality, speed of service, and then providing a really good you know, customer experience. And, and all of that comes from our employees and our systems that we set up, right? Mm -hmm. So because we have employees with autism, like I mentioned, they're extreme users of organizational systems. We have to make things really clear, really efficient, really consistent for them to be able to operate our systems effectively, it makes the business more resilient because it means Absolutely. that we've had to really intentionally solve for each of the little touch points right. of the course of the day. So that makes all of our operating systems run pretty smoothly, pretty consistently, so the customer knows what they're getting every time. Mm -hmm. So that relate, re relates to the speed of service and the quality. But then, just like every other service business, right, you want to feel you're cared about, that people like are happy to talk to you, and our employees are genuinely happy to be at work, much more so than a typical service business. I think your typical service experience, you experience something a little bit different at our stores because our employees really care about their jobs. That comes out and that it creates an experience for our customers that's rare. If I have a choice, yep. I would personally go here yeah. as opposed to just no mission. Exactly. No story, yep. right? Yep. The story is sell, right, you guys? Uh, comment below if you have a similar business other than a car wash. We'd love to hear from you, but you have a, an incredible story and in how that impacts your business, right? Because clearly here yeah. with what you're doing, Tom, that's a big part of what you're doing. Yeah. Tom, let's talk about media and what it does to really any business. Yeah. Let's talk about yours specifically. When were you featured on what platforms? What did that do to your business? And what can somebody watching do to either go after that to get that exposure or do, do they yeah. come to you? Yeah, yeah. So um, had a huge impact. 
Really, we do very little paid advertising because we mainly rely on earned media. So almost zero. Almost zero. They're, right. they're much smaller than a normal car wash. And it really all stemmed, for us at least, from uh, we had a big nightly news piece right early on. And that essentially, we were able to get that because we were talking to a lot of little groups, right? Um, doing like little documentary interviews, little like online, um, like mini docs. And one of those got seen by Harry Smith, uh, who is uh, one of the main anchors on the nightly news at the time. And he came out and he did an interview. And from there, we got on the nightly news a second time. We were on the Today Show twice. We were on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine, big features in Inc. Magazine and National Geographic Magazine. What got you on there? Is it the story? Yeah, 100%, 100%. it's okay. been the mission based. Gotcha. Very little to do with, I mean, you don't really see car watches in major media very <laughs> Ooh, often, yeah. right? Yeah, you're right. It's, it's all about the story. And, and that's really driven you know, a, a big part of how the business has been successful. Mm -hmm. And as far as how other people can do it, yeah. if you have a really good story, I encourage you to, to you know, be active on social media, they're gonna see that. Like that goes onto their feeds. It also, you know, when you search that on Google, you see it. And I, I'd say that's probably the, what I would recommend, okay? As a new business leader, Tom, what kind of leader were you and how have you grown over the last couple of years? I know there's a key word, discipline, compassion, that maybe we can touch on. What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. So at first I was a bad leader. Uh, I really, um, you know, I was young, I was inexperienced. I thought that in order to lead a team effectively, I had to have all the answers mm. and I had to just tell people what to do, but I didn't know what I was doing, right? So candidly, I didn't know what I was doing from an operating perspective. I had really very little idea how to run a successful car wash. I knew even less about how to really manage people and, and, and get people to, you know, essentially be able to respect me and understand and hear what I'm saying and not, you know, be afraid or be frustrated by, you know, everything I'm asking them to do. Yeah. That took a while, and um, I think it was easier for me because we were really committed to the mission of employing people with autism, and I felt comfortable being in service to that portion of our team, which is about 80% of our team. I read a book at that time that had a, a big impact on the way that I operate this business called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Yeah. It's a classic entrepreneurship book, but it was really the right time for me to read that because it's all about building process and structure and routine into a business which is exactly what our team members really need to thrive hmm. and what I needed to do to stay sane. <laughs> and you mentioned discipline, compassion, and, and that is part of the leadership ethos that we preach here, which is very related to what I just said in that in order for us to execute our mission of employing people with autism, we have to be disciplined operators. So we have to hold everybody to the same standards. We have to have clarity in everything that we do. And we have to push people to the edge of their comfort zone. And that's how people grow. And that's how we maintain consistency and clarity among our team and fairness among the team. And that's what makes the whole thing run. I know we touched on it briefly, but I want to come back to it a little bit in terms of as a whole customer service. But then if we backtrack systems, people and the team members with autism, how all that comes together to then create a better customer service experience. Can you elaborate on that a yeah. little more? Yeah, so we've had to think really critically about every customer service interaction, right? So without um, a lot of scripting and a lot of coaching, our employees with autism really will struggle with those uh, impromptu social interactions. That really gets to the core of the, the, the disorder. Mm -hmm. So with that, it's been a, a blessing in that we're able to, you know, see and, and train on a lot of different scenario-based training, right? So if a customer says this, I'm gonna say this. If a customer has this issue, I'm gonna do this. If I can't answer the question, I'm gonna go to my manager. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, we have these, a set, these fundamental customer service rules. So we have one called the three minute rule. Mm. So if a customer has a request that I can complete in under three minutes, I'm just gonna do it for them. I'm not gonna, you know, even if it's not part of the service, I'll just take care of it. So like having these clear things, right? It allows our team members with autism to function better, but it also allows us to just be consistent in the way that we approach our customers, right? So our customers get the same type of responses from everybody because it's all trained and it's all uh, very, very clear. So your connection with the community obviously plays a pivotal role. Yeah. How does one watching develop that in their local market? The best source of talent, especially if you're hiring entry-level type talent like we are, 
is the high schools. So mm -hmm. we'll build relationships with the, specifically the special education teachers and the job coaches within those high schools, tell them what we're trying to do, and they will bring us candidates. Mm. And what's also great about that is you get to know the autism community. So they start to, you start to build brand advocates right away through doing this. Mm. And then as the word grows and, and, and the program becomes larger, the hiring program becomes larger, it is able to really, I think, develop a, a strong base of people in your community that, that are really willing to sing your praises. Well, here's the big question. I love numbers. Out of the six million, what margin of take home do you go for? What's, yeah. Yeah, what's so a we, happy Tom margin? We shoot for a, a, the industry average, which is about a 20% net profit. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Would you like it yeah. to be more? I mean, we always want it to be more, <laughs> but no, no, we're happy with it. What we want to be able to do is, is, is operate within industry standard margins. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. 81% of you who continue to regularly watch our channel have not yet subscribed yet. Do you know that if you do, please do so right now, you provide value to us and we provide value back by bringing on bigger, better guests that you can learn from. So take a second, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate that a lot. Every business has setbacks, it has failures, whether at the inception, in the middle, wherever, right? What were some of yours? Yeah. How did you get through them? Whether it was a tool, system, a person? Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Big failures early on. You know, like I was saying, we were hemorrhaging money to start. And it hurts, it hurts and it's scary. Yeah. You know, my dad had put a large portion of his life savings into this business to make it work, to make it work for Andrew, to make it work for me. He's letting me lead it, even though I, like I, said, I had no idea what I was doing. And I wasn't doing a great job at first. And that led to a, a staff of mainly people with autism that were confused, frustrated, lethargic, it kind of looked like it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I think if we weren't so committed to the mission, we might have just started to hire just like a regular car wash does, and we would have had regular car wash results. Because we were so committed to the mission, it, it, it forced us to figure out how to innovate through it. So it forced us to build that discipline. The mission back. forced you to innovate. Yeah. Why do you think most or a lot of car wash businesses fail? How would you prevent that with your experience so far? I think most businesses fail, not because they're bad, but because they're average. And, mm. and today, average isn't good enough. So there needs to be something that, I like that makes them different. We're not just donating a portion of our sales to some far off cause that you know, may or may not resonate with people. It's, it's lived every day mm -hmm. at the store. And the customers see it every day. It's very authentic. That's pretty cool. And, and I think that that type of differentiation can really save a lot of businesses that are struggling. How did you know you were ready to expand to your second location, which is Margate, and then the third one here at Coral Springs? So it's taken us a while, mm -hmm. right? So our, our first location we opened in, in 2013. About a year and a half after that, we were like, okay, we're ready to, to take the next step. We think we can do another one. The processes and systems are in place well enough where we feel like we can expand to the next store. But car washes take a while, right? So but from the time that you put a purchase agreement on the property, you have to get it entitled, you have to get permits, you have to build it. That's a two-year process. Wow. So it took another two years from there before we, we were able to open up. From 2013 acquisition yeah, so to, it's, to 2015 opening up? Is yeah, well actually, earlier. so it was 2013 acquisition, 20, you know, end of 2014, we were like, okay, yeah. let's start looking for another store. And then we start that process in 15 and actually open the store in 17. Oh, wow. Then, you know, we open and it was tough at the beginning, but, you know, because we had a lot of the processes and systems in place and had already well-trained staff, it wasn't terrible. It was like a, a couple months of helter-skelter and then it, it was back to normal. And then the, the third one, honestly, it wasn't so difficult. We had been through it. We'd built yeah. before. We understood how to do it. There was still, you know, it's still expensive. It's still finding the property. It still takes forever. But it was a lot less stressful. Two more things. So at which point from the location one, did you thought, okay, we're ready for two? Was it a financial decision? What is, was it a systems and processes in place that yeah. have proven themselves? It what was did it boil down I, to? We felt we could grow with integrity because we knew like what we were doing was working, but also the business is making money. So we wanted to make more money. You can grow each location's revenue for sure. But at some point, you're not going to grow too much more revenue-wise at each location. Gotcha. They mature. 
it's a ceiling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, there's a little bit of you know, le you know, leeway. You can do always a little bit better. But if you really want to take another jump, you need another store. What is the most valuable piece of advice you've ever gotten? Just think of a couple. It's got to be from my dad, and he always says, "There's no magic. There's just hard work." And I think a Beautiful. lot of us expect there to be this like lightning in the bottle moment that all of a sudden we're successful, but that's not really how it works. It's a lot of hard work and effort and incremental progress before suddenly now we get that big break and we're ready to capture it. But it wasn't an overnight thing. It was something that required dedication and consistent hard work. That's awesome. So in other words, magic happens in the hard work, that's right? Correct. So yeah, if you're chasing magic, start with the hard work first. That's right. Power of Potential, a book that you have written. What inspired you to write it in a nutshell? Give us a summary. Yeah, so a couple years ago, we, when we were getting all this media attention, we had all these parents reach out to us and say, how do I build something like Rising Tide in my community? And so we did an entrepreneurship training course with the University of Miami to try to understand you know, and, and guide these people to build these types of autism-focused organizations. But what we learned is that it's really difficult to build a business specifically around a social mission. And it's a lot more dynamic of a strategy to embed it within an existing business concept. So for us, that meant, wow, you've got all these small business people, medium-sized business people that struggle to find talent, that struggle to differentiate uh, the, their businesses in a crowded marketplace, that are struggling to build these different systems to scale. And we feel like we have a solution in our social mission and in, in all the related learnings to it to really solve those issues mm. and to really help small, medium-sized businesses. So that's who the, biz the book is for. It's for these small, medium-sized business leaders who are looking for a, really a dynamic advantage for their own organizations. All right, so I gotta ask though, you had a day with 1,200 cars running through here. There's gotta be people that come back and say, oh, I got a scratch, or oh, you did this, or da, 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 da. As you can see, the rising tide car wash rule, yeah. let's take a look and show our audience like, this is here for a purpose, a reason, yeah. right? So how do you deal with people that come back and say, oh, you've broken my light or you scratched? Yeah. Help us understand that world yeah, of so, things. So like the, the biggest issue with car washes is that people don't really look at their cars before they come get a car <laughs> That's wash, true. right? They look at it I don't either. real closely after. Yes. So you get a lot of people that maybe they were at a shopping center six weeks ago and they got a scratch and they didn't notice it and then they get a car wash and say, oh my God, you scratched my car. So that happens every day. I mean, oh, almost man. every day we have to, to deal with some degree of claim that we've damaged a vehicle. Oh, wow. And that's why we have, you know, we really invest in sophisticated cameras. So we're looking at like 4K cameras where we can really zoom in on every aspect of the car and see any pre-existing damage. Before I come in, the car's already fully scanned. Boom. They're fully scanned. Nine out of 10 of the claims, you can just show the customer, hey, look, sorry, that was there already. Good. I can't take responsibility. So that's, that's an easy solution. The cameras are right here. So we, we got a, you know. Arch, basically. Yeah, exactly. You've got an arch, just like it's a, it's a car wash arch. One, that we've got two, six cameras on. Six. Wow, what does this cost you, this setup, you think? Um, I think the whole thing costs about four or $5,000. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, it saves us, I don't even know how much in cleans. Yeah, I can imagine, um, Tom. And then we have a really wonderful um, camera management system called LiveReach, which essentially makes it super easy for us to like clip cameras, send them to customers, have like a, just a very systematized and professional damage claim management process. Oh, wow. So you can actually send them a video. They don't have yeah. to show up here. You don't have to do a whole face-to-face. -face. Exactly. So we That's always convenient. try to def diffuse the situation, right? Okay, yeah. sir, like, madam, let me take down your information. So we have a form that we fill out, take pictures, and then we said we'll get back within 72 hours so we can kind of diffuse the situation a little bit, create a little bit of space so everybody's calm. Yeah. And then we can just objectively say, okay, was the damage there or not? That's cool. What's been your smartest move that you can think of uh, so far? I think the most impactful business move that we made was buying an existing location to start mm -hmm. that was struggling because it allowed us to create a bunch of equity in that location, which then we were able to leverage to build more. Awesome, so you actually took equity out of that one and put down on two and three yeah. and so forth. That's, right. a, that's a good plan. What's one thing you would do differently today if you were to start all over again? I would have spent three to six months working at the best car wash I could find. Three to six, okay. To really understand what it takes to run a good car wash operation. That would have been, been my number one thing I would have you done. You didn't do that? I thought you said you worked a little bit somewhere. 
So I worked, we, we, we ran this test, right, where we trained people on like the basic processes. We, we recruited them, we hired them, we trained them. That gave us the answer to our fundamental question, which was, can people with autism work in this industry effectively? But it didn't really teach me the, the realities and the nuances of the business. And that, I think, as an employee, being immersed in it, like actually having to serve customers every day, and actually having to you know, work with the equipment every day, I would have learned to a deeper level what was needed. And it would have been great to be able to go to somebody who's an excellent operator and see the way that they do it so I could have that mental model and not have to build it over time like I did. Gotcha. So from what I understand, you're a pretty avid reader, Tom. Give us three to five business books that just absolutely are your top favorite. Yeah. So I mentioned it a few times, but my number one favorite book is still The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. That's had a huge impact on me. I really also like uh, Atul Gawande's The Checklist Manifesto. Everything that the Heath Brothers have written, specifically Power of Moments, is my favorite one of the Heath Brothers books, but all of their books out. are excellent. And then I really like Kim Scott's Radical Candor. Okay. Yeah. All right, my friend. Well, it's been a pleasure. I have learned a lot. And I'm, not, I'm sure Paul. our audience have as well. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. It's been a pleasure. If you're interested in cleaning cars, make sure you check out episode 139 with a 23-year-old Alan who started a mobile detailing business, Go Detail, with 500 bucks and scaled it to $75,000 a month. Take a second to like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.